What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's good? What's good? What's good? Back with some more Larry Legend content. This one here was recommended to me from quite a few people, actually, and I screwed up and didn't uh catalog everybody's name that recommended this one to me so i apologize but for those of you that did recommend this one this larry bird night this retirement ceremony that was dedicated to the boy larry legend thank you for recommending this video just letting you guys know this is just short of an hour and a half long so sit back relax get you some crown get you some Ciroc. Get you some bourbon, get you some whatever you want, some water, some tea, some coffee, relax, hang out with your boy, and let's check this out. This is my first time seeing this. I've, I've never watched this before, so I'm here for it. Let's get into it. French Lick. Man, they really put this... thought that that little blonde-headed boy would go on and be what he was. We're the luckiest family in the world. I forgot to tell Mr. Allback, but I would have played for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I believe him. That's funny, but I believe him. Back in the bird, the ball away is gone. You don't play for the Boston Celtics. You never play professional basketball. This is what basketball is all about. My boy Johnny Most. Bird! The steal from Bird. Bird with the game winning shot. Bird! What a play by Bird! <laughs> I love that guy. So, as far as I'm concerned, I gave my heart, my body, my soul to the Celtics, and uh, hopefully we can continue to have a good relationship. Once your name goes to the Rafters, that's, that's the ultimate. For the fans, I really didn't get to say goodbye to the fans, so that'd be the night for, for myself and, and all the people that's really followed my career the last 13, 14 years. Oh. It's really my last hurrah, and uh, DJ's number looks awful lonely up there, but <laughs> hopefully mine will be right next to his. We are here tonight to honor a man whose feats on the basketball court are simply the stuff of legend. For years to come, they will be the subject of conversations that begin with the words, remember when? Remember when Bird stole the ball against the Pistons? Remember the duel with Dominique in game seven and 88? Remember the three-pointer that finished Houston in 81? Throughout the history of the NBA, there have been players who were great at one aspect of the game. Deadly shooters, outstanding ball hawks or shot blockers and so forth. There have also been some, although far fewer in number, who were outstanding multi-dimensional players. But Larry Bird is one of only a handful of NBA stars who excelled in every facet of the game. Shooting, passing, rebounding, defending and we expected it of him. We expected him to always do everything well. We expected him to hit his shots, to grab his rebounds, to pile up his assists. But it was the extraordinary measure of the man that despite the unusually high standards we judged him by, he so regularly exceeded those expectations. He had the ability to lift his game to an even higher level just when his team needed it the most. And that's what defines greatness in any athlete. Not just the ability to pile up numbers, but the ability to come through in the clutch and under pressure. He had a quality that went beyond his skills. He was a winner. He was a champion. Larry Bird was a true Boston Celtic. From the moment he first donned the uniform, he became one with Cousy and Russell and Jones and Havlicek and Heinsohn. And he helped his teams add three more banners to the rafters up above. So tonight, we'll spend an evening with Larry Bird, the man and the legend, 
We'll talk with Larry and relive some of the great moments of his career on video. And we'll also be joined by other members of the Celtic family to talk over old times and share some special memories. Family is the most important element in Larry Bird's life. So now let's take a moment to meet some of the members of Larry's family who are with us tonight. Beginning with his brothers, Eddie Bird, right there. Bro, Eddie Bird looks just like Larry. It's uncanny. Mike Bird. Mark Bird. Mark Bird looks just Jeff like him. Jeff Bird. Jeff Bird looks like him. Larry's sister. Bro, they got to be all twins. Oh, man. Linda Goganauer. They got a beautiful sister, Larry. And Larry's mother, Georgia. Georgia Bird, sweet Georgia Bird. Go ahead, girl. I see you with your pin down best. Uh huh. Looking good, Georgia Bird. Fly lady. Go ahead, girl. Mm hmm. I see you. Looking sharp. Yo, I love the I love the ovation Mama Bird getting. Up in there cooking meals for him and Magic during a commercial shoot. Lord, God bless that woman. Raise that boy. Of course, Larry's wife Dinah is here. <laughs> Along with son Connor. There you go, there's Connor. Young Connor Bird. You know, so many athletes have children and then they I'm not going to say force but sometimes um, they say hey why don't you try out basketball if you like it you you know you got me we got resources we got great training we can see if you can get a career out of that I've never heard anything mentioned about Larry's son what does Larry's son do what, what, what does he do I'm curious did he ever consider basketball ladies and gentlemen for the first of many times tonight, Larry Bird. That ovation is, I can feel it. I can feel it on YouTube. That's respect, looking clean. Looking clean in that white and green, boy. Dapping everybody up. I don't know if y'all tell if I told you this. I have a friend named Larry. Looks just like Larry Bird. Looks just like Larry Bird. He did. He, he's a he's a young boy in his twenties. He didn't even know who Larry Bird was when I brought it up to him. I was like, bro, you don't know who Larry Bird is? I was like, man, y'all young generation, bro. Thank you. This seems like a perfect night. I mean, except for the fact that Bill Lambeer couldn't be here. <laughs> That's true. I, I wish he was here tonight. By the way, go check out our Larry Bird playlist. I got a video out there that highlights him and Lambert's beef in detail. What would you tell him if he was? We would probably hang him up with my <laughs> my number. <laughs> Yeah.
When, when you got here out of Indiana State, there's a story about when it dawned on you that you could be more than just a very good player, but you could be somebody who really mattered in the history of this league. Well, we was practicing in Marshville, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's really not a fair story because we was practicing in Marshville, the rookies and some of the veterans came down, and the first day we played, and, and Emil Carr was guarding me and was tough, and you know, it's a typical rookie thing, but the next day, Rick Roby guarded me. And when, when <laughs> Rick was uh, defending me, and that night I knew I was gonna be a great player. <laughs> <laughs> What, what kind of sense of the Celtic tradition did you have when you first got here and what you were heir to? Well, I really didn't know much about the Boston Celtics. Of course, I knew they won a lot of championships, but I've never been in Boston, never had a feel for what they was all about until I got to the Marshfield camp and I seen over 2,000 people come in and watch us play. Then uh, all of a sudden, I got here and I, I heard that you're not supposed to wear the uniform unless you're playing in the game. And that right there showed me a lot of class because if you're not playing in the game, don't wear the uniform. If you're playing and you put the uniform on, you better play and you better wear, wear it proudly. Amen, brother. Do you have a memory after, after leaving Indiana State, coming to the NBA, you have a memory of the first game you played, first one that counted, regular season game with the Celtics? The one thing I really remember about the first game is somebody lit a dove out or a pigeon, a white bird, and I knew right then that uh, it was something special. Um, I didn't, the first shot I took I missed and I ended up getting the rebound, putting it in with my left hand, but it was all a fall. I didn't think it was such a big deal, but uh, as I played two or three games, I knew I was in for a, a tough career here because I knew the, Dave Callens told me when I first came in, he goes, the one thing about playing in Boston is don't go about it 90 or 80 percent because the fans know basketball here and that stuck with me and um, he said if, if you dog it they know so play 100 percent every night you have no problems you know we mentioned earlier that you're following russell and kuzi and heinson and havlicek and cowens was still on the team but an even more daunting prospect you got steve kaberski's number <laughs> I mean, that, that was something right there, right? <laughs> well, so, so I heard when Steve was playing, he said his number's gonna go up in the rafters like everyone else, so tonight I guess he's right. <laughs> so let's take a look now at some of the highlights from those first few years with the Celtics, capped, of course, by the 81 championship in the finals against the Rockets. Drafted in the NBA by the struggling Boston Celtics, Bird was looked upon as the savior of their proud tradition. Everything is starting to fall into place. I hope you all realize this. We have Larry, one or two little moves, and we're ready to go. Having finished in last place the season before, the Celtics hoped that this 21-year-old basketball wonder boy from rural Indiana would be the cornerstone of a new dynasty. But he would prove to be even more than they could have imagined. Shake loose to Larry Bird. Bird, beautiful pass to Ford. Ford, a three-point shot. Bird, a rebound, and a basket, and he's fouled. Bird, tremendous instinct for the offensive board that time. Celtics have got three seconds, two. Bird, a runner. It's good! Yes, indeed. Crossover, one leg. Seconds. Bird, slap pass to Archibald. Oh. Ahead to Henderson, to Bird. Leading the Celtics to the largest single season turnaround in NBA history, Bird would capture Rookie of the Year honors and revitalize both the franchise and its fans. And in his second season, he would lead the Celtics confidently into the playoffs on a mission to recapture championship glory though they would fall behind three games to one to the Sixers in the conference finals, Bird would simply refuse to let the Celtics' title hopes die. Playing with ferocious determination, he would lead one of playoff history's most dramatic comebacks as the Celtics clawed their way back to even the series at three. 
The Sixers could only watch as Bird delivered the knockout blow. the finals back to Boston Garden. And now the Celtics look to raise the 14th championship banner to its hallowed rafters. Larry Bird. Follows his own shot. Love that play. The Houston Rockets could only helplessly watch as the Celtics methodically eliminated them in six games, led by a determined Larry Bird. In just two years, this young Hoosier had taken Boston from last place to an NBA championship, fulfilling their wildest dreams. And if we could, we'd like to ask Bill Fitch, Tiny Archibald, and Cedric Maxwell to join us up here for just a moment. Tiny, you'd been a great player in the league, led the league in scoring and assists, but this was your chance to play with a champion. Well, I'm, I'm just happy to be here tonight. Uh, like... Man, Tiny only played five years? Larry Bird, for many of people in the Boston Garden and another gentleman sitting over there, Magic Johnson, has probably brought fond memories in my game of, of basketball, but when I go back to my city, New York, a lot of the kids hopefully will see this, but they asked me, did I play with Larry Bird? And I said, yes, I, I, I played with him, but we had a lot of other great teammates, but he's probably the single most important person on the Boston Celtics. He was the key that made the team run, and I'm just, I'm just probably glad like many of the guys i'm ecstatic to be here and i think that larry tonight is your night hopefully it will be many more nights like this and i'm just honored to be here thank you very much bill i know it's hard to explain but what does it mean to a coach to have a player like larry bird well it means one of these for me <laughs> <laughs> One or more. Red, Red brought these out. It, it means one ring for me and about three or four or five for the for anybody else that played with him. He was uh, he's a winner, and uh, you know I've said Larry's lucky lucky guy too because he played with a bunch of winners. But uh, they they needed him many a night. I, uh, this guy is the only night I ever made him mad at me is when I told him he was the second best left-hander we had on the team. And he says, who's the first? I said, Larry. <laughs> Max, how does it feel to be back at the Boston Garden? You gonna eat so calm, bread. Here to love. You're here to love for Seti. Seti said. Uh, sit down. Um, great being back. Um, unfortunately, they gave me the gift, Larry, so I guess I'm going to take it home with me. Uh, uh, it was a. Uh, Thrill really playing with you. 
and you know it was uh, me and you, first of all, before you challenged any of these guys in the NBA, it was me and you going heads up every day. And all I remember, them 20-footers raining down on me, so. <laughs> and I always remember thinking like, boy, you know, this white guy really can play, can't he? <laughs> Larry, um, I guess it's my honor in uh, representing all the guys behind me and some of the guys who aren't here, Terry Durod and Wayne Cretlow, who were on the team also. Um, it's my honor to present you with this, um, what the hell is this? Uh, <laughs> Okay, okay. Oh, Bob, you know, I'm after your job, but never mind. <laughs> what is this? Um, a commemorative coin for Larry Bird looks like a gold-plated coin that is very expensive. So, <laughs> I'm happy everybody. Congratulations. That's dope. That's dope. You know. Two-time playoff MVP three-time NBA MVP, Olympic gold medalist, NBA Rookie of the Year. I can't read that. Joined Boston something? College Player of the Year, 13-time NBA All-Star, All-Star Game MVP. It's member of three NBA championship teams. This team was very special because there's only one guy who had success in college, and that's Rick Roby. Um, and you know that they're really pros at Kentucky because they all get paid anyway. So we felt, we felt very honored because none of us really had success uh, in college. And this team won a championship, and it was really great because it's the first time we won something. Any of us has won anything, and it's very special. So uh, this team was very special. There's no question about it. I, I like when players get asked, you know, which championship meant more to you? Which which championship do you favor more? Your first one, this one, that one, your last one? And it's interesting to get people's answers and the reasoning behind them. But I like this. It's like the first time all of us won. What did Larry mean to the history of the league in a way that continues beyond his retirement as an active player? I, I think that uh, people think about the NBA now. Rest in peace. Uh, they say teamwork. They say leadership. They say making everyone around you better. Uh, I'm looking forward. Five years from Monday, they're going to announce that Larry and Magic are in the Hall of Fame. And we're going to talk about it again. As if scripted by fate, Larry's quest to regain championship glory would finally provide him with a long-awaited rematch. Playing against Magic, yeah, that, that was uh, something that I always dreamed about since he beat us in college. But as the series began, it seemed more like a familiar nightmare as the Lakers quickly stole the Celtics' home court advantage and seemed ready to put an early end to their championship dreams. This has to be one of the most decisive routes in championship game history. But Bird was not ready to surrender. We got some great players on this team, but we don't have the players with uh, the heart sometimes that we need. Until we get our hearts uh, where they belong, uh, we're in trouble. He had sounded a call to arms, and his Celtic teammates would respond with ferocious intensity. <laughs> I love that play. <laughs> Boston would push their way back into the series, beating the Lakers with hustle and pure desire. Boy, look at look at that fighting for position, baby. I love to see it. All season long, Bird had led by example, and the finals Boy. would prove to be no different, as he simply refused to be denied. Lakers had 
several chances, and here's Larry Bird chucking down the court. That shit out of here. Bird's Bird is flying. Quest would end with storybook perfection. Revenge was his. Hey. And the championship once again belonged to the Celtics. No one believed that we could beat the Lakers that year. Absolutely no one believed it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, we believed in ourselves, and that was a lot because of the leadership Barry had. Dude, they even started rushing out on the court before the buzzer even officially went off. champion Celtics. Quinn Butler. I wish they could bring that back to the NBA. Just the, the crowd rushing the court like that. God, that, that's an amazing feeling. Just watching it years later. I would love to see that in real time. Bill Carr, Gerald Henderson, DJ later, don't worry. ML? Hi, Bob. How are you? Good Quinn, to see you. how you doing? And Gerald? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, go ahead. Give it one wave. Go ahead. Give me a wave. Show them how it's done. There we go. Get him going, son. <laughs> Gerald, take us back to the steal in game two that really saved the championship series. Well, uh, I think, you know, uh, what happened was more of an instinctive thing. Uh, you know, me and ML used to talk to each other before uh, any time we had to go in before defensive situations, and we would just psych each other up. Uh, we got to make something happen, ML. We got to do it because <laughs> it was a dire situation there, and fortunately, uh, we came out, and uh, the defense rotated properly, and uh, as Casey taught us how to do it. <laughs> uh, and uh, I came up with the steal, you know. Uh, Stop being modest, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and as we know, we could all hear Johnny Moe. Henderson stole the ball. <laughs> <laughs> now, ML, if you weren't in Rest the game, in peace. and Larry was. And as I recall, that was often the Most case. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> then the, the towel-waving duties fell to you. Well, you know, I received, uh, during the course of my career, the, the latter part of my career, a lot of uh, boos and yells concerning that towel. But I remember in a Philadelphia series, I picked it up one time on a, on a game uh, here in Boston, got the fans going a little bit, and uh, Larry came to me another time and said, ML, get that towel going again. So when Larry tell you to do something, you do it. <laughs> How hot was it in here, game five and game seven at 84 against the Lakers? Uh, they said it was 105. Uh, all I remember is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with the oxygen tank to his face. <laughs> Look at Cookie, and the goggles wonderful out, woman, right? wonderful woman. You know, and I say Kareem because Kareem was such a great talent too, not unlike Magic, not unlike Bird. But the point is, is that it was very, very hot in here tonight. I, I, I bet you anyone that was in here that night was totally drenched because you had two great teams going at it, giving it everything they could possibly have. But guess what? If we have a game seven or a game five in here a couple years from now, we don't have to worry about it because we'll have an air-conditioned Boston Garden. <laughs> uh oh, look out! And you see that that meets with mixed reviews. No question. Quinn, before you make the presentation, you've told me a story about calling Larry the day after a championship. The day after, and what was he doing? Well, um, I for for me it was a, a unique experience. First of all, I'll play with him, but. After we won in 84, we went out, you know, go after the game, you go eat dinner and do things like, you know, people do. 
but we get ready. So I call Larry the next day, and I call over and ask Dinah. I said, Dinah, where's Larry? The very next day after we win in 84, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bird is out running trying to get the championship, the next NBA championship. That's the kind of dedication that Larry Bird had. Go ahead. That's probably true. <laughs> but probably. I probably felt so bad when I got up, I had to do something to start feeling better. Uh, in addition to all of that, Larry, what we have here is a watch that I want to present to you, and I hope it gives you some feel, some sense of feel for how we feel about what you've done. Now I know why your back has been hurting. You had to carry us for all of those years. Thank you. Entering the 1986 season, Larry was at the top of his game, and his Celtics were primed to make one more championship run. It would prove to be their most impressive. From the opening game, they executed to perfection. A supremely talented group of all-stars, they played in perfect sync and dominated all competition. Bird just hit him with a screen, then gets it back to the hell. And we went out there with a job in mind, and we all knew what our jobs were. And when we went to work, it was like punching in the, punching in the clock. You know, if I help, I'm on the assembly line, and my job is to put the, put the radio knob on the radio. I'm putting the radio knob on the radio, and the other guy's putting in the buttons and putting on the antennas. And, you know, Larry was the antenna man, and we were the button man. I love that pass that he does. Well, Larry, doing his job, had never been more rewarding. With the addition of Bill Walton, Larry had more weapons than ever at his disposal, and he used them to devastating effect. God. I think what uh, you know made that team so special was its ability to to play any kind of style. You know, we could play the setup game, we could play the fast break game. We had great defense, great rebounding, and then great if passes. nothing was working, hey, we could always give it to Larry. Give it to Larry. Back and shoot a three. As the Celtics dominated the league, it became clear that this season would not only be a drive for a championship, but also a journey into history. They would lose only one game in the Boston Garden all year, setting an NBA record for home court mastery. They would compile the second best record in Celtic history, and Bird would join Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain as the only players to win three consecutive MVPs. The playoffs would be a mere formality as the Celtics dropped only one game on their way to the finals. And even the championship series itself would be less a contest than a coronation. Birds carries out the game plan. And the Rockets want to know what hit him. Houston would quickly become a footnote as Boston captured its second title in three years and took its place as one of the greatest teams in NBA history. Bird goes in a three-point land. Oh, he makes it a 28-point lead. I mean, I always felt that, and, and still feel that that's the best team I've ever seen in this league. I'm sure Magic's got a team he liked to throw up against it, but to me personally, I thought that's the best team ever assembled since I've been in the league. 16 out of 40, the greatest winning tradition. You did it with hard work and teamwork. You've earned it. It's yours. Enjoy it. A young Bill Walton boy. Younger. Now, DJ and KC, would you join us up here for a moment, please? All right, now, KC, you played with and coached some of the best teams and uh, with some of the best players in the history of the league. But this 86 team not only was one of the greatest in terms of results, but their feel for one another on the floor, their passing ability, their intuitive sense of where each of the others were, that was remarkable. Very remarkable. Uh, these guys came in together uh, in 81. There's Kevin, there's Larry, there's Robert. 
and they knew, Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge, they knew what each other could do. And what I did was said, okay, let's see what's, what's happening out there. And you'd see uh, Larry shooting a three-pointer, and then I'd call a timeout, but, and they didn't count the three-pointer. So he's very upset with that, so I diagrammed the play. He says, heck with the play, Case. Give me the ball and tell all the rest of the guys to get out of the way. I said, shut up, Larry. I'm the coach here. Okay, all right. Then you should take the ball out and give it to Kevin, then you throw it to Larry and everybody get the hell out of the way. <laughs> and then, and then true to his word, we're, uh, in Phoenix, he goes down uh, before the ball is thrown in, and he's standing right in front of the Phoenix bench, and he looks at all the guys on the bench and says, I'm getting the ball, I'm going to put it in the hoop. <laughs> and he says, uh, watch my hand as I follow through. <laughs> the, ball is, the ball is thrown into Kevin, Kevin gets to Larry, Larry fires it up, puts his hand in the air as he continues on to the dressing room. <laughs> now, that's what you call arrogance. <laughs> Now, Bill, somebody told me a story about uh, Chief getting hurt. You come in and you say, all right, I'll pick up some of the offense here in uh, Chief's absence. But what did Larry tell you? L Larry knew I was going to be coming ready to take a lot of shots tonight and get a lot of minutes because Casey had to play me. It was either me or Greg Kite. And it basically, it had to be me. And so Larry... Larry, Danny Ainge, and myself were always the first three guys to the gym. DJ, of course, was the last. <laughs> but I'm in there stretching out on the floor, getting ready in the locker room before I'm going to go out and play. And Larry walks in and walks right up to me as if he'd been thinking about me all day. He said, hey, I get all the shots on this team. <laughs> Just because Kevin or Chief are not playing, that makes no other opportunities for you. Now get your butt to the weak side and get some rebounds so I can shoot more. <laughs> but the magic of Larry Bird it, uh, was not on the basketball court, was not in the locker room. It was in his ability to create an atmosphere, to create an atmosphere of excitement wherever he went. I grew up in California, in, in Laker country, and I, I, was a, I, w I was a big Celtic fan growing up, and I was always... Well, what are the chances of that? It was always my dream to be on the Celtics. Bill, <laughs> Bill Russell was my favorite player, and mm -hmm. I watched Casey Jones, and, I, and I, the first time I came to be a Boston Celtics, uh, <laughs> I come in the gym and Larry starts playing great as he always did and and the fans started chanting Larry 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 and then a little bit later is MVP MVP and and the excitement in this arena that is present here tonight was created by Larry Bird's play but not by just by his play but by his presence as it is here tonight very well said Luke I mean Damn it, I called him Luke Walton. <laughs> Bill. Very well said, Bill. Well, Dennis Johnson has just been sitting here, so we should turn to him. You called him the best player you ever played with. Without a doubt. DJ probably wasn't our best scorer. He probably wasn't a, our best defensive player. But what DJ did, he did a little bit of everything. And what he did, he did good. DJ wasn't the greatest shooter in the world, as we know. <laughs> but when the game got down to the last <laughs> minute or two minutes, if the game was tied, DJ seemed like he always came through for us. He always made a big steal. He was always in the right place at the right time. He, uh, he brought so much to our club in 84. It was just unbelievable, and we all felt very awed about it. And uh, I'm gl glad I had an opportunity to play with him because there's no question. I mean, Robert and Kevin are great, uh, uh, but DJ did a little bit of everything. He was very special in a sense of every way, and uh, that's why I said that. But 
I've been very fortunate. I've played a lot of great ones. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Scripted well. Well, you know, with Larry, e even to the end, I mean, this being his night, as I always said, uh, well, first of all, Larry said a lot of these things because it was I who had the ball all the time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and to keep me happy, Basically, he would say stuff like this because he knew I was going to throw him the ball. <laughs> and if Robert and Kevin then would have said, I probably would have passed it to them too. But <laughs> no, uh, even all the way down to the end, and uh, this being you know Larry's night, he he still goes out and he's the type of person he is. He's giving everybody else credit. Uh, enjoy it. It's great and. It's yours. And I mentioned that Larry Bird lived the game of basketball. One of the things we used to do was watch a lot of satellite television. Larry didn't do it, but Kevin and I, Chief, would do it. And I'd be watching these West Coast games in the middle of the night, and I'd see a great play by Magic and Jabbar, and a great play by... I don't know, Magic, were there any other teams out there on the West Coast? And I didn't know. So I'd get an idea, Riley would have a great play, and I'd write it down. I'd quickly call Larry up in the middle of the night, and it'd be 1 o'clock in the morning. And I'd dial his number, and he wouldn't even say hello when he picked it up. He'd say, Bill, that play won't work. Now get some sleep. <laughs> get some sleep and quit bugging me. Good night. <laughs> Hang it up. <laughs> That's funny. Well, in just a little bit, the uh, banner will officially be raised to the rafters. And it's kind of appropriate that these two had that unspoken communication on the floor, even down to one of the most famous plays in Celtic history, the Game 5 steal against the Pistons in 87, where Larry grabbed it. And DJ knew in an instant before anybody else on the floor what was happening, cut to the basket, winning lay-in from the left side. You didn't know? No, oh, I do. In, in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so it's appropriate that these two have their numbers displayed alongside each other. And uh, for, for a presentation of a miniature replica, here's DJ. Um, you know, I'm glad this is finally on here because last year Larry told me that um, he was going to pay somebody to climb up there and put a, you know, a three by my name. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it would basically just be him up there still. But <laughs> I'm glad this is here. Uh, the description says, on Larry Bird night, Boston Garden, February 4th, 1993, number 33 has now joined those of us Celtics legends raised above the Garden Parquet. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. That's a dope whistle. Now, before you fellas go, there's one important member of the 86 team who couldn't be here tonight for a very simple reason. He's playing for the Phoenix Suns. But you know how we remedy that, so here's Danny Ainge. Bird has got Pressy on him, finds Ainge on the cut. Danny for two. My first game in the NBA, uh, Bill Fitch called a timeout and he diagrammed a play and I was supposed to cut off the high post and post up for a second and then go across and, and set a pick. Well, I came off the pick and I was wide open and I stood there waiting for the ball. I had a smaller guy to post up and, and Larry just waved me out of the way saying, get out of here, get out of the way. And from that time I learned uh, to run Larry's play, not the coach's play. <laughs> I'm really grateful for having had the chance to play with Larry. Uh, he taught me a great deal about the game of basketball. He taught me how uh, to prepare for games. Uh, he was a great example to me in, in how he approached his job and the professional that he was. And uh, besides all the great things I learned on the court, the passing and the shooting and, and all those things, Larry was a great example. And feel, I feel very blessed to have had the chance to play with Larry Bird.
Young Danny Ainge. And gentlemen, the greatest front line in the history of the NBA, Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, and Larry Bird. It's a hell of a front line, though. It's a hell of a front line. Kevin, it's obvious how well you three work together, but was there some sort of internal friendly rivalry between the three of you? Um, I don't think we were really rivals in any sense. I and mean, we had some good practices and everybody got after a pretty good a lot of times. But no, there wasn't. I think that the thing that Robert and I knew from day one, the thing I knew from day one, it was Larry's team. You know, and Larry ran the team and we knew where we fit in. Larry was multi-dimensional. Chief and I were finishers. We'd run down that box. I tell you right now, Larry was still out there standing right in that corner. I'd get my butt down that box and get the ball <laughs> because he gave it to you where you needed it. And, uh, you know, we, so we knew that right, right, right from the start there wasn't. But there was, there was just a mutual respect amongst all three of us, and that's what made it work. There was a, a stretch in 1985, and I think these two games were maybe a week or 10 days apart. You got 56 against Detroit, and that broke Havlicek's team record. And Larry got you the ball right at the end so you could pile up some more points, right? And then he had a comment for you at the end of the game. Well, Bertie told me at the end of the game, you know, 56 points is a lot of points. I'm figuring, man, I got to let someone else shoot now. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm just, uh, this is crazy because I had never scored 56 points before, even in a Churchly game, you know. So uh, <laughs> we were out there, and, and so I kind of said, no, nah, that's enough. Bertie said, hey. It doesn't happen that often. You know, you go for 60. Go for it. I thought, nah, I'm not going to go for 60. And after the game, Bertie said, should have gone for 60 because I'm going to go for 61 these days. Nine days later, he went for 60. <laughs> Robert, what one thing, as you sit alongside these two guys, what one memory comes to you first? I would have to say when I first came to the, to the Celtics, uh, I witnessed the first practice. And that's when I knew that Kevin and Larry and the rest of the team that was similar in back in 80 was a very special unit. And that's when I knew that we could be a very special team and accomplish great things. Which one of the two of you has the presentation in this round for Larry? I don't know. No, they have, they have a preface <laughs> on I do. I'm just kidding. I, I, got the, I got the presentation for Larry. Right here. We got something here. Here we go. All right. Boy, whatever it is, Birdie, it's heavy. I tell you that much. Um, it says, Larry Bird, upon the Garden Parquet and throughout the annals of the NBA, the Boston Celtics have set the standard by which all of their teams are measured. Larry Bird upheld that standard in the highest tradition of Celtics pride. His extraordinary play defined an era in Celtics history. And truer words were never spoken. These are some cool lithos Larry's getting, man. That's dope. Folks, turn your attentions over here for just a moment. I'm standing almost exactly in the spot where one of the most surprising and important plays in Celtic history took place. The spring of 1987, game five of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Pistons. The pivotal game in the series, and Detroit is up by a point with five seconds to play. They've got the ball out of bounds. It's in the hands of Isaiah Thomas. All they've got to do is get it in and execute, and the game is over. And game six is in Detroit. You all know what happened. Let's listen to the call. Seasting bumps him a couple of times, and nails it top of the key with 17 seconds to go, and the Celtics call time. It's Detroit by one, 17 seconds, so Boston goes for the final shot. On the left, it goes to Bird. Bird guarded by Mahorn. Drives around him, goes on in, and the ball gets knocked out of bounds by Ada. Oh, they're going the other way. When
when we lost the last opportunity to score uh, by throwing the ball away, uh, I was sure it was over. The game was over, and, and uh, Detroit had won. Thomas wants to get it in quickly. Please, somebody come up with, you know, this ball. Johnny Mouse. Oh boy, this place is going crazy. Bird. It was all the great ones that have been played. You know, it's the one you look back on and kind of smile and say, "Yeah, we foot was in the trap, but we snuck out of there somehow." Shut They forgot, you know, they forgot about Larry Bird, that's all. And that play against Detroit helped to set up the final championship confrontation between the two great rivals of the 80s, the Lakers and the Celtics. Please welcome now the Laker player who, along with Larry, defined a new level of competitive excellence in the NBA, Irvin Magic Johnson. You know that's love, man. When you got a Laker getting a standing ovation in the garden, man. You know that's, that is a competitive, mutual level of respect between the community, the city. To have that much respect for an arch rival like that, that's, that's paying homage right there. That's, that's love. Love to see this, love to see this right here, man. Go check out our reaction video playlist. Oh. <laughs> we got a, a video up there reacting to the courtship of rivals. Courtship of rivals, Larry Bird and uh, Magic Johnson. It's really, really, really good. It's a great documentary. That's love, man. Got these two icons on the stage at the same time. Gonna have a bit of an open form here. That, that's dope. Commissioner Stern pointed something out that I hadn't thought about, but it's obvious there's such symmetry in your careers, the championship game in college, entering the league at the same time, being the big contributors to its growth through the 80s, playing on the dream team together as you close out your respective professional careers, and now you'll go into the Hall of Fame on the same day, the two of you, that's fitting. It all came back around full circle, man, from how it started. Beautiful story, man. Storybook fashion, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Well, no question that, um, you know, it was, it was tough times in the beginning for both of us, being um, the competitors that we are. Um, so we, we very ra rarely spoke or said hi. But I think after that one commercial, you got a chance to see. I got a chance to go to Mom Bird's house and... Um, we sat there and we had a chance to have a 
a conversation, finally for the first time, and we found out that um, we were much alike. We have similar backgrounds in terms of Midwest boys, and um, we just start laughing and, and giggling like two little boys, and uh, it started a friendship that uh, will last forever. And uh, I'm just happy that I got a chance to be a part of tonight. You know, I wouldn't miss it for the world. You know you caused me a lot of sleepless nights. You know, um, I tell people all around the country when they ask me a question, who's the best, who this, who that? And um, I always tell them that uh, you know, I didn't play back and way back and all that, but when I was playing, that uh, you're the best all-around player that ever played. And that... <clears throat> but more than that, the, the, the more respect that I can give you is the, the fact that uh, you are the most feared player. I feared you more than anybody else because I knew if it was a little time on the clock, you know, point one, one, half, one, half a second, this man would find a way to win that damn game. <laughs> Clutch, I should baby, thank you for clutch. Helping me to improve my game, too. Making me play at a level that I don't know how I got up there myself, you know. Um, it was just a sense of unbelievable high. You know, you, you guys are lucky, ladies and gentlemen because I don't know if it's gonna ever be a, a rivalry. You know, there's been some great, I don't wanna down the NBA now, Commissioner, but hmm. I was at the Lakers Orlando game the other night before I took the all-nighter to get here, and it was some excitement for Shaquille. It's some excitement when Michael come in, no question about it, pack houses and so on. But people don't go crazy like they used to when Larry Bird was coming to town. And I remember we wished to get off the plane here. The baggage men. Magic Larry's gonna get you tomorrow. You know. Everybody you passed was just going crazy. No magic tonight. You know, it, but it was a sense of excitement that it was unbelievable. And so you had to play. It, it was, and I know you don't feel that anymore, and that's too bad. But this man should be commended and thanked for what he has done, not only for you, the league, but kids and everybody else. And, uh, like I said, just thank you. And I'm gonna keep going sometime. Yeah, I'll let you get back, Bob. <laughs> you know, I, I guess there's a hundred questions I could ask about specific moments, but it's hard to rank any one ahead of the second or the third one. So why don't you just express your feelings for Magic Johnson? Well, there's no question that Magic's probably the toughest competitor and probably the best player I've ever seen. There's no question about that. We already know that. <laughs> On the court, he took every game serious. He brought his teammates to a level that they couldn't even achieve on their own. We've seen what he's done over the last 13, 14 years, starting back in college. I'll never forget that college game where I knew from the beginning we was outmatched because of the talent and Magic was directing him, leading him up and down the court. We got into the first year of the NBA. He wins a championship right off the bat. A lot of pressure. 
Look at his finger, bro. Uh, there's pressure on me to start winning championships right away. And uh, I don't think I could ever achieve that if I didn't have somebody always looking out and see what I'm doing every night. I knew he was watching me because I was watching him. <laughs> I was making sure that I knew what he was doing every night. But he took my game to a level, especially when we played him in here. He's had more success in here than anybody else has because he knew how to work the crowd. He knew how to take the crowd out of a game. But he is by far the best player that I've ever played against and really ever seen. I can't include all the other great players because I never really watched professional basketball. But Magic, there's one thing. We can agree upon that we're retired now, right? Right. We probably will never come back again. No. <laughs> but I want to ask you, then will you get the hell out of my dreams? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, what are you talking about? I'm going to tell this story, and then I know you're trying to get me off. They, they, you want to go home and everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're in L.A., and I'm hurt. So I can't play against the Celtics. You know I'm killing myself. So, you know, Larry warming up. So the anthem is sung, and get introduced and right before they go out on the court, Larry comes down and he said, you know what? Don't worry. I'm going to put a show on for you. <laughs> <laughs> and he went out. I think he scored 38 points, about 20 rebounds, about 15 assists. And every shot he would shoot, he would turn to me. And I said, boy, and you would sit there. You know, the thing about it that I love about you is that, um, see, most guys talk trash and talk stuff and can't bag it up. But Mr. Bird, you know you can bag your trash talking up. Facts. And last Facts. But not least, I'm going to say this because you told me one lie. You only told me one lie in your career. That's pretty good. Only one. <laughs> and you only lied to the fans and all the people in the world one time. And you know what that lie was? You don't remember, do you? Larry Bird said that there would be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever ever be another Larry Bird. And so, I don't care how many people, how many players, there will never ever be another Larry Bird. So, you take that to the bank. I love you, I respect you, and I admire you. So this day there hasn't been another Larry Bird. There will never be a Larry Bird. No Larry Bird. I'm going to get off of here before I start crying. Larry got a, a jersey here. Well, first of all, the Lakers sent one jersey over with uh, your name on the back. Bird. See, I did. Yeah. So. That's all right. Boo him again. Oh, you know I'm having fun with this, so go ahead. Um, and last but not least, this is mine, and I signed it to you, to uh, the greatest basketball player ever, but more important, a friend forever. And I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Wonder what Larry doing with those jerseys? Has he got them hanging up? You noticed I signed yours on the back. <laughs> that's because that's how I ever seen of you. <laughs> <laughs> says to Irvin, a great champion and competitor, you are the best, and thank you for all the great competition and all the great games. See, when we played the Lakers, it was the ultimate game. Of course, we played Philadelphia, 
back in the early days. And the only reason I say that's the best rivalry is because we never got to play the Lakers more than two or nine times a year. It would have been nice. <laughs> nine was better than two. <laughs> but it would have been a great rivalry, just like back in the older days when we used to play you all the time. And you were the first Celt uh, Celtic Laker team to win on the Boston Garden a Championship. I don't commend you for that. I'm still <laughs> peed about that. <laughs> but there's no question about it, Magic. We had a great time, and it's all over, buddy. Yeah, it is. It's all over. But you know what? We had that last dream to play with you and the dream team. And, and ladies and gentlemen, they were talking about, well, Larry might not play and this and that. And I told the guys, I said, if Larry doesn't play, I won't play. And I'm glad that we finally got that dream. When America's dream team was assembled, there was no question as to who its captains would be. Who's taking the last shot with the game on the line? Let's we'll see what's going to happen is Larry and I. He's going to shoot and miss the whole rim. I'm going to be standing there and lay it in like uh, Balbona's team did in 83. Yeah, that's right. But <laughs> the games didn't go exactly according to Larry's script, but the team's march to the goal didn't lack for theatrical grandeur. It would prove to be Larry's farewell to the game, and his curtain call couldn't have been more fitting. This group may well be the greatest team ever assembled in the history of team sports. Playing for his country, Larry showed the same indomitable pride as when he first entered Boston Garden over a decade ago, and displayed a spirit that has never lost its youthful fire. One last time, folks. Magic and Larry. Well-deserved standing ovation. Now it's a pleasure to welcome back the man who headed up USA men's basketball when he wasn't running, the Celtics, Dave Gavin. Thank you, Bob. And very quickly, I'd like to ask Russ Granick, the deputy commissioner of the NBA, to help me with this little ceremony. Magic, this ceremony is going to be repeated in the Los Angeles Forum on February 14. We tried to, we got your ring, and I didn't want to give it to the Lakers because we wanted to give it to you tonight. But I'd like to ask Russ, on behalf of all of us at USA Basketball, to present to Larry a ring specially made by Balfour, emblematic of winners of the gold medal of the 1992 Olympic basketball team, Olympic champion. And Cap, you certainly deserve it. And Magic, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been like it was without you and Larry there. I felt that um, Larry and I developed a, a very good friendship in Barcelona. Um, you know, he's a lot different than I thought he was. Uh, he seemed a lot, you know, very caring. You know, told a lot of jokes. <laughs> we developed that Harry and Larry <laughs> routine. Um, he talked a lot of trash. A lot of trash. I just wish... Larry, I wish you were still playing so I could pay you back for all the stuff you were telling me uh, this summer uh, in Barcelona. I miss you. We could, I wish I could be there with you tonight uh, on mm. your retirement. I'm gonna, congratulate you on a fantastic career. Um, you've had a big impact on my life. Um, looked up to you uh, all the time and your work ethic. Um, had a great time with you this summer. Well, it's gotta be the highlight of my, my life to get to spend time with the guy that you looked up to so much. You're the best, and I wanna wish you the best in retirement. Larry, I hear that you retired. Thank goodness, I'm glad, I'm tired of seeing your face. Well, a lot of sad memories to me, but you know, I enjoyed you tremendously. I wish you a lot of luck, and I think you had a very wonderful career, even though you probably ruined a lot of my uh, successful games against the Boston Celtics. And I see you somewhere along the road, somewhere playing golf. Well, Larry, it was an honor to play against you. It was an honor to play with you. And uh, I'm just very blessed that I was born in your lifetime so I can tell my kids I played against one of the greatest players to ever touch a basketball. Like I said, 
uh, playing with Larry Bird was a dream come true, one of the highlights of my basketball life. And uh, he, if, if it wasn't for him and Magic Johnson, basketball would not be what it is today. So thank you, Larry, for all the money. <laughs> Chef, you a damn fool. The fellow who has been here for every Celtic championship in one capacity or another, as coach, front office man, guiding light, could not be left out of tonight's ceremony. So let's light up the garden for Red Auerbach. Light it up one time. Shout out to the uh, cigar nod by Bob there. Great cigar nod. I tell you, man, Red is the smoothest mofo in the building at all times. Always killing it with the glasses, bro. Even though at this age he probably stopped smoking them cigars, he should have still walked out with it. Just for show, just for show. Clean, man. And you lit up how many of these? Close to a thousand, right? A few. <laughs> a few. Tell me about the maneuvers involved in landing Larry Bird. Well, we saw him play. We liked what we saw. <laughs> we didn't ever think he's going to be this good. After all, how could you figure a guy who is not that quick can't jump that high. He's a good shooter, but there are a lot of good shooters. Rebounder, average, but there was no way, no way that we could figure about his heart, his ability to be the greatest self-motivated athlete I ever saw, and the fact that he made everybody around him play better. He lifted their game. But, you know, I, I listened tonight to all these things about Larry, and the only thing I didn't like is that they didn't talk about Larry, the man. The guy. He, he, he's a man's man. He's a, a friend of people. He's a very charitable guy. He, he does all those kind of things. And I'm just proud, very proud, to call him a friend. And the only regret I had I never coached them. <laughs> what, what was he like to negotiate with, even with the agent as a buffer in between? Well, in the last two, we, we sort of did ourselves. We sit down and lie to each other. He was telling me how great he was, and I was telling him how great I was. But the one thing I've always told Red is that, Red, you're getting paid a large sum. You haven't scored one basket since you've been here. That's true. <laughs> Bird the steal in the forecourt. Starts to break himself. Goes by Seasty. On the cut. McHale. One great play after another. Board on the cut to Bird. Swing through. That'll reverse. Did that reverse? My God. I love that play, man. You see that pass? Tight rope in the baseline? Behind the back. Yeah, I'll say it a hundred times. It's one of my favorite passes of all time.
And now it's time, folks, to raise the banner to the Garden Rafters as he joins Walter Brown and Red Auerbach and Bill Russell, Jojo White, Bob Cousy, Tom Heinsohn, Satch Sanders, John Havlicek, Dave Cowens, Don Nelson, Bill Sharman, Easy Ed McCauley, Frank Ramsey, Sam Jeez. Jones, Casey Jones, Jim Laskatoff, and appropriately, on this occasion, Dennis Johnson. Talk about having a, uh, a history of all-time greats on your franchise. My God. I didn't think he was ever going to stop talking. Into the rafters we go, baby. Number immortalized. That's pretty cool that he's doing it. I like that. That's pretty cool. There's mom crying. Mama bird brought to tears. Beautiful. This is some majestic ass music. Rightfully so. Feels like it's ripped out of a Disney cartoon. Disney movie. Alright, welcome to the light show, baby. This is well done. Okay, that was dope. That's nicely done. I like the animation, man. Ladies and gentlemen, number 33, Bird. That was clean. Thank you very much. 13 years ago, when I loaded up the car and headed to Boston, I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. I thought I would come in front of you and play in front of about 10,000 people, do my job, go home, come back the next night, and repeat it. I've been very fortunate over the years. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to make me cry, and you probably will. I've been very blessed over the years 
I played with some of the greatest players that ever play the basketball game. I had an opportunity to play with Robert Parrish. I had a chance to play with Kevin McHale. I had a chance to play with Tiny Archibald, Cedric Maxwell, and Dennis Johnson, and more and more and more. Yes, I'm going to miss playing for the Boston Celtics because I was very proud to play for the Boston Celtics. I never, I never put on a uniform to go play a game. I put on a uniform to win. I was taught to win. I was taught to win and I was taught to be proud. I was taught to hold my head up high. When you lose, you hold your head low. You try to motivate yourself to the next game. Yes, I'm going to miss running the pick and roll with Robert Parrish. I'm going to miss throwing a ball down low to Kevin McHale and watch him do his work. See, them guys took all the pressure off me. If I couldn't get the shot off, all I had to do is go to them. Yes, I'm going to miss playing with DJ, the backdoor pass, cutting on the basket for the easy layup. But most of all, believe it or not, I'm going to miss the fans of Boston and the people of, the Bo of Boston. Because, like, like Magic said, he said, you made me take my game to another level. But can you imagine being on the parquet floor down here for the greatest organization in the world and having 15,000 people out chanting, Larry, Larry, Larry. Now, don't you think that would make you proud? So I, I knew when I got here, after the first few games, that you demanded this team of ours and this organization to start winning championships. We knew that, the players knew that, and most of all, our opponents knew that. We did our best to win not only games every night, but championships. I always felt we had enough talent to win five while I was here. Unfortunately, Magic got in the way in two of them. But you made me in 1986, in a sixth game against Houston, reach a high that I was, was always chasing, a basketball feeling that I didn't think I could ever attain. Of course, I've been up for games. I've been sky high. But I never concentrated on one game like the game in 86. If you can remember walking, when we came out of that tunnel there, the, no, in 86, come on. <laughs> came out of that tunnel there, and the fans were standing. They smelled blood. They wanted us to win a championship. And I knew that, and I played, to me, the best game that I ever played is because I got that extra boost from the fans. In 19, early, when, it, when I found that the team wanted me to be their captain, their leader, I came and asked you, the fans, many times to get us over the hump. We knew you wanted to win just as bad as we did, but your voice, your excitement brought everybody to that level that we needed to get over the hump. We talk about the 84 game when it was hot in here. The Celtics, it wasn't that hot. It's only hot when you're playing in the other opponent's building. I thought that that night was a game that was a must win. And again, we called for your help, and you gave it to me. You gave it to all of us. So night I leave. I leave basketball forever. I leave a game that I loved. Sorry, but I'm gone. I'm history. <laughs> I dedicated my life to basketball, and I dedicated my life to the Boston Celtics. I dedicated my life to the fans of Boston. I tried to play through pain that I thought that I would never be able to get out of bed. I don't want no sympathy. I just want to know what you meant to me 
as a player. I did my very best to please each and every one of you. I know it was tough at times, but my job as a player was to win basketballs and championships for you. Okay. I did it, but I didn't do it enough. But the night I leave you and I say thank you, I'll be around. But the night my basketball career is officially over and I had a blast. I want to thank Magic Johnson for helping me to develop a game that I've always... I think it's very ironic that we both go out, came in the same year, go out the same year, go to the Hall of Fame in the same year. We've both been blessed. And we've been very honored to play for the Celtics and him for the Lakers. But I leave tonight, and all I can say is thanks. Looking out here tonight and seeing all these people in here makes you feel like you're on top of the world. See, I'm a proud individual anyway, but I'm also proud to be playing for the best organization that I was ever assembled. And thank you, Red Arbach. Thank you so much. So I say good night, Boston, and may God bless each and every one of you. Good night. That was dope. That was dope. That was dope. That was wonderfully done. Um, put together by the Boston Celtics organization. A great ceremony for Larry Bird's retirement. I really like how they brought um, a bunch of his teammates in, especially those that group from the first championship as well to talk about that and and everybody got a chance to or most of them got a chance to get on the panel and you know on a open forum and and talk about Larry Bird and give their opinion and share a story very very, very well done and I like the fact that they gave him they gave him gifts with each group that came out see that was dope man got all kinds of different lithos that were uh very well put together I wonder, has, has, has anybody else, have, have, is there video footage or has anybody else ever got a retirement ceremony at like this? Like they threw everything at Larry, man. This was a whole event. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anything like this for a player that retired that I can think of or that I remember. Has anybody got this kind of treatment? Man, that, that was very well done, but I, you can tell the Boston Celtics organization cares about their players, or at least their great ones, and uh, they treated Larry with the respect and gave him the respect and acknowledgement that he deserved for what he did for that franchise. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. Well deserved. A very beautiful thing to see. I've seen other players' jersey retirement ceremonies, but it was not on the scale of this. This was a whole event, man. Very well put together. Recalling scenarios, recalling games, having people speak on it, all kinds of things. That, 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 that was well done. I, I'm Larry Bird might be, listen, between him and Mike as the most beloved NBA athletes of all time. Michael has more of a global, he gets more love globally definitely but shoot domestically they might be neck and neck man that the, the the larry love is unreal it's crazy it's crazy crazy y'all let me know what you think about it appreciate you guys for stepping in hope you enjoyed the ceremony um like comment subscribe hit the bell stay notified check out our playlist reaction video playlist larry bird playlist michael jordan playlist kobe bryant magic johnson you name it we got playlists baby play them and uh, y'all take care. Be blessed. I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.